Okay, our next speaker is Ed Loveless. Uh, he is a technical fellow of high power electrical systems at Aurora Flight Sciences. Dr. Loveless leads the electric power systems roadmap, strategy, and technical team growth for Aurora's electrified aircraft programs. He has 30 years experience, including CTO and engineering lead at several startups focused on electrified powertrain, commercial trucks and buses, hydrokinetic renewable power generation, electric power conversion technology for sea, land, and air mobility, and GE Aviation Controls. Dr. Loveless is a US DOT Eisenhower Fellow in Transportation Research with degrees in Mechanical and Electrical Engineering from MIT. His presentation today is eVTOL, The Promise of Large-Scale, On-Demand, Urban Air Mobility. Please welcome Dr. Loveless. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm all set? OK, great. Um, so before I get started, I just want to acknowledge a couple other of my colleagues um, who contributed greatly to the presentation you see today. Brian Yutko, who's our VP of Research and Development. David Hall, who's our Power and Propulsion Group Lead. So I'm just going to talk about three things very briefly, a brief history of Aurora, and then talk about both the promise of urban air mobility and uh, then close with some of the challenges remaining. So uh, Aurora is about 30 years old, uh, spun out of MIT in ultralight human powered flight. Um, as I'm sure most people are aware, we were acquired by Boeing at the end of last year. So now, of course, we have all the added resources and technology and manufacturing associated with Boeing. Um, but the key DNA of Aurora is uh, this rapid development process of designing, building, and flying advanced aircraft every year, and we've, we've done over 30 in this time period of the company. But our legacy with electrified aircraft goes, goes way back to the beginning. One of our first uh, contracts with NASA was uh, looking at solar-powered flight, leveraging uh, the human-powered flight technology that we had developed uh, at MIT. But today, uh, we're looking across the full spectrum of electrified flight opportunities uh, from ultralight, high-altitude, long-endurance applications down at the kilowatt level um, to the urban or air mobility that we're going to talk about today. And then again, uh, up into the megawatt class of applications um, that will extend out into the future, of course, and will involve both hybrid and uh, full electric applications. Um, just as uh, George Bai said earlier, uh, y you have to be solving a problem. So we, we use slightly different language that means the same thing. Uh, Every technology that we're looking at needs to buy its way onto the aircraft. And that, that goes, of course, true for electrified solutions as well. But the only other thing I'd add, which uh, you know, this quote kind of exemplifies, is that um, you know, we know what technology is fully commercialized and available today, uh, but we don't know exactly uh, where it's going in the future. And so uh, some of our assumptions uh, may be challenged, and uh, we may find uh, that uh, new opportunities are unlocked with new inventions. So first, on the promise of electrified aircraft, I, I have it broken down really into three areas here. And uh, I'm going to first talk about unconventional missions and then go into the other two areas. Um, so one of the opportunities with electrified architectures is it opens up that design space and it also opens up some new mission opportunities. And uh, one of those that's exemplified by this is, is, again, the activity that we've done in solar aircraft development. And as solar cells and electrical energy storage have improved, we've advanced towards uh, the direction of having uh, closing that day-night cycle and being able to um, operate uh, continuously on, through the life of the battery storage system. Another example here is a, is a project we did uh, with um, the government um, looking at efficient hover and high-speed cruise. And the technology we developed there was a rotating canard and wings solution um, using a turboelectric uh, propulsion system. 
one of the key uh, technical risks that we were able to knock down on that program is demonstrating the stability and control laws of flight with that configuration with this subscale demonstrator that we flew a couple years ago. Next area I want to talk briefly about is, of course, there's four major areas of uh, air transportation. We tend to look at this new area of urban air mobility as, as a new uh, uh, market potential adding to those four general areas. And uh, again, what you're looking at here is a very long-term vision uh, when you're carrying a tremendous number of passengers and you've really fully realized um, the network that uh, Adam from Uber talked about. It'll be on demand, it'll be point to point, it'll be at a price point that uh, is getting close to what ground travel is. But more importantly, um, we also see it as enabling in terms of the, in terms of the uh, pilot requirements and people being able to get on and use these airplanes with a driver's license. So uh, how are we attacking this? So just uh, a few sort of high level um, principles that we use. First, of course, is simplicity. Uh, the second key one is designing for efficient crews. And the third one is the areas where we're developing right now, we're using technology that's available today. And that was also noted by Uber when they were talking about some of the opportunities that are available even with cells that are on the market today. Um, there's still uh, lots of trade-offs in terms of the design of such aircraft, and that's one of the areas that Aurora is uh, very focused in, uh, trading off um, the attributes of both winged flight um, as well as a helicopter's great lift cap capability. Um, and we've done work uh, with flight demonstrations in, in both of those systems where you have uh, fixed wing as well as rotating wing concepts. The other key enabler, of course, is on the electrical side. Uh, but that's not just the power portion of the system. It's also the sensing systems, the improvements in computing for these complex flight control conditions. But finally, it, of course, it is also the powertrains and moving to electrical powertrains with high specific uh, weight capability and also efficiency of the powertrains. But that still leaves you with a large design space. And, and again, this echoes uh, what you've heard from previous uh, speakers here. There's a wide range of aircraft that can satisfy these types of requirements. And uh, Aurora is involved in lots of activities uh, looking at the attributes of these different, different uh, configurations. But uh, we would ask the question that uh, does vertical takeoff capability and all electric, um, is that the only thing that's required for that long range vision with millions of passengers? And, and we'd say no, we'd say that autonomy is the other key element that has to go along with that. All right, so now let's just talk a little bit more about the market potential. So um, beyond efficiency and fuel use, of course, there's other uh, important attributes that could make electrical systems buy their way onto an aircraft. Noise, emissions, regulatory pressures. Um, somebody else showed uh, another map. So this is uh, one way that we look in terms of the market potential in terms of the range of the aircraft with today's technology and then projecting forward to tomorrow's technology. But as I said, even with today's technology in terms of uh, energy density with cells, including the packing factor for getting a complete pack energy storage system on an aircraft, this still has a uh, viable marketplace that's unlocked. But as uh, those advance over the years, um, that of course can expand the area where an urban air taxi can operate. Lastly, performance through integration. Uh, this has also been mentioned by some of the other speakers. Uh, to take best advantage of all of these opportunities, uh, the aircraft needs to be designed around the benefits of these systems. So two of the areas that uh, Aurora is qu quite invested in are 
distributed propulsion and boundary layer ingestion. So working from left to right over here, first you have uh, a conventional aircraft, then you have one that has the boundary layer ingestion. Doesn't necessarily need to be electrified. You could do that with conventional powertrains. But then to take advantage uh, at a greater level, you had distributed propulsion, and you would argue that it'd be easier to have that many propulsors when they're electrified rather than mechanically connected. We've done some publicized studies in this area. Uh, this one was a subcontract to NASA on their Star Cable program, looking at a turboelectric configuration. But again, it wasn't just uh, analyzing the turboelectric arrangement. It was going through a sizing and hybridization study uh, to determine the best points of operation in terms of splitting both gas propulsion versus electric propulsion. Um, we have a number of activities in this area um, across a wide range of aircraft designs that are all knocking down some of the technical barriers to commercialized urban air mobility. And here's some examples of some of them. So now just to close with some of the key challenges. To the ch challenges are not just technical, of course. They're organizational. Um, this is a very young space, so the supply chain for electrified aircraft is really, I'd say, in its infancy. Um, there's some big players involved, but there's a lot of other players who are in other industries that could potentially move into the aerospace side. And, of course, there's the whole integration and certification aspect of this. So... Key challenge, this is the obvious one that everyone talks about. It's the weight of the energy storage. Everybody has their favorite comparison graph. You know, this one shows a small battery versus a thimble full of gas versus a Big Mac. Other key area I just want to touch on briefly is thermal management. So um, the, the thermal management of gas turbine engines is, is a very well-developed area over many, many decades. The thermal management of electrified propulsion systems in the air is not. And uh, so this is another area that Aurora has significant investments in terms of technology development and solution development. Again, from the hundreds of watts to hundreds of kilowatts up to the megawatt scale. And of course, coupled with this is the safety of flight aspect that is quite a bit different than for ground vehicle applications. Uh, the other challenge that I'll mention again is, is integration activities. So what you're looking at here is a, uh, is a chart from a program that we did with NASA and MIT, developing a sizing and trade study tool on the uh, LEARN program. Uh, which allows us to trade off the different attributes and do sensitivity analyses for a wide variety of different electrified uh, powertrain configurations. Series parallel, all electric, hybrid, turbo electric. And this allows us to explore the trade space in terms of payload and range, in terms of uh, levelized cost of operation. Um, and... Uh, in terms of, of course, uh, fuel consumption and, and cost. But this, in our view, is, is, is early in the game. Um, there's going to be quite a bit more activity in terms of integrated engineering design challenges over the next decade as this industry matures. So again, in summary, um, Promise. There's uh, a lot of promise in terms of electrified aircraft, and when Aurora thinks about that, uh, and in here I'm referring really to sort of the general public, when they think about electric airplanes, they think about the little drones that they use as 400-foot uh, cameras. Um, but we're obviously all here talking about more commercial and useful applications that solve a problem. Um, one piece, again, of course, is the zero emission capability. Uh, the other one is the cost of operations that's been talked about before. Um, 
the uh, last one on the, uh, on the promise side that I mentioned is uh, sound signature. And I'm, I'm almost struggling for the right phrase to use here because I don't want to say quiet. I don't want to say low noise. And I also don't want to say something with a negative connotation. But we don't need to be zero noise. But we need to be undisturbing in the application area that we're working. Uh, challenges. So return on the weight investment. And if you focus again on the energy storage side, as that continues to advance, that will continue to unlock more uh, market and mission opportunities in this area. The other one that's been mentioned again by many speakers is uh, what I'll refer to as the flight turnaround refueling. However you solve that problem, which of course could be swap, could be fast recharge. Um, Lack of standard work, and, and all, all I'm referring to here again is, is just what I said on the previous slides, that this is, this is really early in the development of commercialized activities. There's very little in terms of passing through the certification stage, but as those first companies start to get through the certification stage, we'll start to see this develop into more of a uh, rigorous and certifiable design path for all of these companies that get through that point. And uh, uh, just on the last one, um, in terms of separating real from aspirational, uh, we have a long-term vision. Uh, that's absolutely true. But the projects that we're working on are aircrafts and systems that we know we can fly. Thank you. I do have one video. Uh, if we can get to that. So at Farnborough last week, um, Boeing unveiled their vision of this space. And if we can click through it, I'll show the short video. Imagine a world at your fingertips, changing how we move and connect, bringing the world around you closer to home. Boeing is building that future now. We're at a convergence point. The global population is growing. The explosion of e-commerce drives expectations of frequent, fast delivery. Commutes are getting longer. We're running out of space to build. These challenges call for innovation to reimagine travel and transport. We have the technologies and enablers to support autonomous on-demand mobility. Boeing experts are prototyping vehicles to explore and validate these technologies. We're investing in ecosystem development with partners of all sizes from all industries. Advances in connectivity, analytics, AI, machine learning, and propulsion will help us shape the future of seamless on-demand mobility when, where, and at the scale needed. This new world of travel and transport is more than the next generation of vehicles. The surrounding ecosystem will enable this radical change in mobility connecting goods and people around the world, preserving safety, creating much needed convenience and efficiency. It won't all happen at once. Integration of new vehicles and systems will evolve from small autonomous air vehicles to larger purpose-built aircraft. This evolution will reshape mobility to meet the needs of a growing on-demand economy, all made possible by a safe and reliable next generation air traffic management system allowing piloted and autonomous air vehicles to coexist safely. Innovative propulsion systems to improve economics, reduce emissions, and access both densely and sparsely populated areas safely. Digital infrastructure supported by machine learning and data analytics to optimize operations design and execution. A software and technology suite that helps create safe, seamless mobility while protecting the security of people and information integration with existing transportation networks, unlocking the potential of underutilized infrastructure. Boeing has a legacy of building the future, driven by a passion for taking humanity further. We have a track record of tackling challenges with the safest, most reliable solutions, changing how goods are moved and people connect around the world. We've created a network of satellites and revolutionized global communication systems. We've created vast secure information networks with millions of users, nodes, and advanced data analytics. For decades, we've tested the boundaries of autonomous technologies from seabed to space. Boeing has made the unimaginable a reality for more than 100 years, and we haven't done it alone. We'll continue to work with other industry leaders 
and new and existing partners to create a vision, an ecosystem for the next generation of mobility systems to be imagined, designed, developed, and delivered. We're identifying new business models to fundamentally change the way we approach the market. We're supporting and investing in new technologies and incubating new businesses we know are critical to support this future vision. A future that's better for society and the environment. Join us on our journey. So there's no question that marketing people have more fun than engineers, but uh, th thank you very much. <laughs>